This is Money Guide with Mary Stirk from Stirk Financial Services. Now, here's Mary Stirk. Hello, all. I'm Mary Stirk, CEO and founder of Stirk Financial. And I wanted to share some information with you today about a new law that was passed, which is called the Secure Act 2.0. Now, the SECURE Act 2.0 is actually an overlay bill to the SECURE Act 1.0 that was passed at the end of 2019. I will tell you that one of the big things to understand about this is it's a very large set of legislation and tax reform, and it is going to take time for tax attorneys, advisors, and companies to be able to understand it, implement it, and then set up the technology to support it. So for the time being, there may be a lot of questions in terms of answers with I don't know, or it's going to take a while to clarify. But because this is something that affects most people at some point in their life, I want to at least get some preliminary information out to you so you understand what you need to know at this point in time. The SECURE Act stands for Setting Every Community Up for Retirement Act. SECURE Act 1.0 basically had Congress say, hey, if somebody passes away and they leave an IRA to the next generation, we want to accelerate our taxes out of that. So what they did is they compressed the time frame. And if you inherit an IRA now, you only have 10 years instead of a lifetime to take that money out. This applies to most beneficiaries. If you're a spouse, you can still move it to your name and take it, and that's just fine. But if you're not a spouse, it really changed the game into how you have to take that out. One of the things that just recently happened is that they clarified the tax rules on this. So again, we have a, a law that was passed in 2019 with IRS clarification of how we have to implement this in 2023. So you can see what I mean in terms of it may take a while to get full information on this. But... The clarification, if you are somebody that has a beneficiary IRA, or you think you will be, is this. If the original account owner of the IRA was already taking a required minimum distribution, you have to also each year and have the account fully liquidated by the end of 10 years. If they were not taking a distribution, or if it was a Roth IRA that didn't require a distribution, you don't have to take anything out annually, but it does still have to be out by the end of 10 years. So that clarification piece is something that's important to understand that literally just came out and you have to be aware of it. If we missed RMDs and they were supposed to be taken out in 2021 or 22, then we don't have any issues because there's a grace period and the IRS is not going to charge any penalties due to the fact the clarification just came out. But now let's go to, a, to Secure Act 2.0 and let's talk a little bit about how that changes the game for everybody. The biggest thing that I think is important to understand right away early in the year is that they did change the age for people to start taking a required minimum distribution. It previously was age 72 and in 2023 has now moved to age 73. Now, over the next 10 years, it's probably going to move up to 75. That's part of the bill, but that's going to take a while to get implemented. But as of this year, it's age 73. So I think that's a good thing. One more year to continue saving your money, deferring taxes on it. Maybe some extra time to do some strategic things like Roth conversions for another year, if it's appropriate, before your required minimum distribution turns on. Now, as I said, if you're younger, this is going to ratchet up over the next 10 years to age 75. So again, there's some room for strategy in there, thinking about what you can do over that time frame for additional tax planning that may help impact you or your beneficiaries. Another thing that they changed in this that I'm a big fan of is they changed the tax penalty. It used to be that if you missed your required minimum distribution, the tax penalty was 50%. That was something you heard right, 50, 50. So if you were supposed to take out $30,000 and you missed it, your penalty was $15,000. Well, what they have done is they've changed that to a 25% penalty. And if you fix the required minimum distribution in a timely manner, they're gonna be nice enough to drop it down to 10%. <laughs> the moral of the story though is don't miss your required minimum distributions. 
Another provision of this law, which again is going to take some time to implement, is that 401k plans are going to have the option now to have the employer match come out as Roth dollars, which if you follow all the rules could be tax-free when you're in your retirement. That has never been that way before. And that's a big deal for people to help save tax-free money for the future. In addition to that, simple plans and set plans have never been allowed to be Roths before, but now they're going to be something where we can have that be allowable. You can choose to have them be pre-tax or you can choose them to be Roths. Now, again, the companies don't have anything set up yet to be able to accommodate this because it's so new, but it is something that over the course of the next couple of years, we expect to see you able to implement, you able to have some of that tax strategy planning. One of the things that um, the law also changed were significant changes to catch-up contributions. So if you're over the age of 50 and you're saving for retirement, then there are going to be additional amounts that you can put in. There's some kind of interesting and different calculations to determine how much you can do. So that's something you want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your advisor with. But good to know you can actually save more money on a tax-favored basis. Another issue that is out there now is something called a rollover 529. So one of the downsides to 529s has really been that if your child doesn't go to school, your child doesn't use it, nobody else in your family is gonna use that money, it's kind of hard to take advantage of the tax rules inside of it. Well, now you're going to be able to have the beneficiary of the 529 do some type of rollover to a Roth-like type of program. There are huge limitations on this though. The person has to have been the beneficiary for at least 15 years, and you have ha would have had to follow contribution limits during the time you were saving for it. So there's a lot of limitations to this, but it does give us a unique opportunity, again, to work with money on a tax-favored basis coming out of 529 plans that might not get used for education. Now, for any of our employer clients who are the employer side of the plans, there is a whole host of different changes to the 401k plans, to the administration of them, to what they allow. There's even some unique things in there like a domestic violence withdrawal that's going to be available now, one-time domestic violence withdrawal of up to $10,000, which the taxes then can be paid on over the course of three years. That's just one of the quirky provisions that are in this related to the employer side of the retirement plans. So again, all of these things are going to take time to digest and implement, but from the additional credits of contributions that you can do, additional savers credits, additional money that you can actually defer and have some tax-free benefits from, there's a lot of good small things inside this bill or inside of this law that add up in totality to some really good benefits for people. So if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out and call. Just wanted to get this information in your lap so you are aware of it. And uh, we will look forward to spending time over the next couple of years understanding this, digesting this, implementing this, and using it strategically to help you. Thanks for listening. Congratulations to Mary Stirk and the team at Stirk Financial for earning a spot on two Forbes lists. Forbes Best in State Wealth Advisors and Forbes Top Women in Wealth for five years running. The views expressed are not necessarily the opinion of your audio provider and should not be construed directly or indirectly as an offer to buy or sell any securities or services mentioned herein. Investing is subject to risks including loss of principal invested. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. No strategy can ensure a profit nor protect against loss. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should only be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Securities and investment advisory services are offered through Woodbury Financial Services Incorporated. Member FINRA SIPC. Insurance offered through Sterk Financial Services, which is not affiliated with Woodbury Financial Services Incorporated. Neither Woodbury Financial Services Incorporated nor its representatives provide tax or legal advice. You should consult a qualified attorney or tax professional to answer your specific questions. Sterk Financial Services is located at 350 Oak Tree Lane, Suite 150, Dakota Dunes, South Dakota, 57049 and can be reached at 605-217-3555.
Forbes Best in State Wealth Advisors list includes 10 recipients per state. The award is based on qualitative and quantitative data, rating thousands of wealth advisors with a minimum of seven years of experience and weighing factors like revenue trends, assets under management, compliance records, industry experience, and best practices. The award is not based on portfolio performance or client reviews. There is no fee in exchange for rankings. Third-party rankings and recognitions are no guarantee of future investment success and do not ensure that a client or prospective client will experience a higher level of performance or results. These ratings should not be construed as an endorsement of the advisor by any client nor are they representative of any one client's evaluation.